So today we have a fun topic. What are risers like on Thunders? So I have 1 8 risers here on my Thunder 148 Team Hollow Lights. I'm riding it on a toy machine which has been a kind of flat board with um, not a very big wheelbase. Um, and I've also got some pretty worn out Spitfires. I'd say these were 51s and they are easily 48s or 47s even by now. So first impressions, I'm actually really liking the extra height because I do find that at 8.25 um, I find thunders to feel a little bit low and not proportionate to me. Once I get eight and a quarter and up, I actually prefer the height of indies. And these pretty much brought it right up to about the height of indies while still keeping the popping feel of thunders. So I'm gonna skate around a little bit and do some tricks and I'll let you guys know how it feels. So I actually really like the way the risers make this board feel for all my flip tricks, especially because like I said, it has a flatter feel. So because it's all of a sudden getting up higher, my nose is getting up higher, and I still have the increased wheelbase from Thunders, it actually has a really nice feel. So great for my flip tricks. I was struggling a little bit less on front side flips and 360 flips. And my other tricks were feeling pretty easy to pop. And I also am at a bit of a disadvantage because I have some pretty old worn out shoes here. Like if I had a new shoe with a lot more rubber on the sole, I would actually be able to get my kickflip tricks a little bit higher. So definitely an improvement having the risers. And it doesn't feel weird like I thought it would. I mean, they're hard plastic and I always kind of assumed that risers would make your board feel weird or unstable in a way, but it's not doing that. So it's pretty good. Now the next thing we should try is some manuals. So the manuals aren't as bad as I initially thought. When I first got here, I was warming up with some manuals and I was struggling. So it was actually probably more me than the risers. However, it does change the manual point a little bit. And I really like the low responsive manual feel that Thunders have. And so I found that by changing it a little bit, it was slightly more difficult to find, but still there. Like not, not a big enough reason to not ride them if you think all of a sudden I can't do manuals. No, you can, it just feels a tiny bit different. Next, let's try it on some transition to see if these still have that nice coping hugger feel that thunders are known for. Hey, the sun. So, I know Thunders to be nice coping huggers. And now once I increase the height of these a little bit, I would say they feel a lot more like Indies, which isn't bad by any stretch. Look how many amazing transition guys ride Indies exclusively. But what I would say is if you're wanting to buy Thunders because they have a reputation, according to me and Chris S and a couple other guys on the interwebs, if you're wanting to buy them because they have a reputation for being coping huggers, and you're thinking, well, but they're too low, so I'm gonna put risers on them, I would say you're not gonna experience quite the benefits of how nice these feel doing lip tricks on transition. If you make them higher, I'd say you could just stick with indies. So for that reason, um, I wouldn't say risers on thunders are the bestest. Now, let's see though how they pinch on flat bars. So the nice low pinchy feeling of a thunder when doing feeble grinds is cancelled out by adding the risers. I feel like I'm doing it on indies and I've never really preferred how indies feeble grind because I feel like I'm up too high on the rail. I'm not just tucked right into it. Now obviously there's room for debate. There's plenty of rail chompers that are really good on indies. But if I have one name to say and it's pretty current right now about getting nice and pinchy on rails with a low thunder. Nija, maybe? Whatever you think of him, that man can pinch a rail. Let's try one more feeble here. Mm -hmm. 
So how about for ledges though? Now, I don't think it's gonna feel a lot different for ledges like crooked grinds, but let's give it a try. I think it's safe to say that it doesn't make that much of a difference. I'd say it feels closer to indies. I have no problems with crooked grinds on indies. So I'd say not losing too much there. So I'm in the mood to finish this off with a few out of the bumpy tricks. Captain Ben launching the rocket. I'm too tired to get it better than that. So one thing to note here is the risers actually stick out a little bit past the thunder. So they're made for indies, I guess. But let's get into what I thought of these. I would say putting the risers on this really flat deck made a big difference to the point that I'm actually probably going to keep riding it until the deck's done because I don't feel like changing the trucks and it actually does help me with my pop on my flip tricks. Now it changes the point a little bit. Like thunders have that nice sort of hefty feel at the front of the board when you do your tricks. And then it sort of gets like to that little bit past where the riser is and it sort of gets lighter. It's hard to explain, but that's sort of what it does. And I think that's maybe why they don't make thunders higher is because it's sort of engineered to have that like perfect point where the tail hits. Although I could be overthinking this a little bit. So final thoughts is it does feel good on a flat deck. If I had a steep nose and tail, I wouldn't have put them on or keep them on. The main thing to take away from this is that it gives you that extra height to stop getting wheel bite. And it also helps a flat deck be a little poppier. So all in all, it's kind of a cool experiment. I'm pretty happy I tried it out. I've always kind of scoffed at risers. I didn't really see the point, but in this case, it actually solves a problem. So thanks for watching. I hope if you're wondering what it's like to ride thunders with risers, maybe this will help give you an idea.